Henry has returned to Hong Kong after serving in the US military for years. Looking to start a career as a teacher, he goes to his former school, Tak Chi Secondary. The principal notes that he doesn't have experience in teaching, but after being shown a recommendation letter from a higher official, he is given the job. Before Henry leaves, the principal informs him that the class he is assigned to teach is one of the worst in the school. The morning of his first day at school, Henry walks into the class to see that it is in absolute chaos. Some students are sleeping, others are singing, some are playing video games, while a good number of them are cooking ramen on a portable stove. Even after the teacher walks in, they completely ignore him and continue what they are doing. Henry tries to get their attention, but they pretend to not hear him. He gives up on trying to divert their attention and goes around the classroom commenting on the things they are already doing. The students who are cooking are asked to eat less ramen because it contains too much sodium. Henry then approaches a guy named Zufa playing ukulele and helps him with it. Similarly, he warns a gamer kid against the radiation he might receive from staring at the screen all day. Geez, if that's a real thing, then it's too late for all of us anyway. When the students finally start listening to him, he introduces himself and writes his name and phone number on the board. The students laugh because his handwriting is ugly. Then, someone from the students calls him and asks him to leave the class, but Henry laughs it off. The kids ignore him yet again and continue with the activities they were doing before his arrival. Having enough of it, Henry uses a rubber band and piece of chalk to trigger the fire sprinkler in the room. The students quickly spread out to keep themselves from getting wet. He finally gets their full attention and officially welcomes them to his class. Welcome to my class! After class, a group of five lowest ranking students gathers in the sports supply room to smoke. The leader of the group, Jack, has a crush on an A-grade student from another class. The others find him staring at her picture and make fun of him. The group has a rivalry with the rich and spoiled kids from the school's basketball team. They enter the supply room and mock Jack, as usual, because he is poor. Later, the basketball team is practicing, while Jack and the group watch them from nearby. Jack drops a bottle on the court, which causes the team leader to fall. The group laughs, but is given detention by the school's English teacher, Miss Liang. To avoid detention, they play a prank on her and run away when she is busy cleaning her desk. Elsewhere, the school's principal is distressed because the education board is planning to deduct 20% of their annual funding. The people from the board come to take a tour of the school to inspect where the funds are being used. At the same time, Henry enters the classroom where the students have set up a bucket of water to prank him. But his reflexes work faster than the falling bucket and he is able to push it away. The students who had been waiting to make fun of him are left shocked. Henry asks for Jack's packet of cigarettes, knowing that he smokes. Jack simply hands him the pack, curious as to what he is about to do. Then, Henry asks Zufa to name the three ingredients that are in a cigarette. When he answers the question correctly, he is allowed to skip class for the day. Everyone starts to bang on their desks, demanding that they should get to skip class as well. When they stop, he hands them all a cigarette and asks them to analyze it. Henry knows that if he simply mentions the effect it has on their health, they won't take it seriously. So, instead, he asks them about the outcomes of smoking cigarettes and explains how tar forms in their lungs. For the first time, they pay attention to the teacher and are actually interested in learning. After the bell rings, he asks them to return the cigarettes and the students reluctantly agree. That day, in the cafeteria, the captain of the basketball team makes one of Jack's friends, Bruce, trip on his leg. This gives rise to an argument between the groups, which soon turns into a fight. They throw food and tables at each other, destroying the place. Later, Henry is informed that five students from his class have been temporarily suspended for starting the fight. Henry finds Jack fighting his opponent in the hallway and stops them. On being asked to calm down, Jack accuses the school of being unfair because the rich kids get no punishment. That day, after school, Henry goes through the files of all five students to find out more about them. The first guy is named Zufa, the son of a Pakistani immigrant who is always discriminated against because of his race. He is often accused of stealing by the policemen in his neighborhood. Zufa's only wish in his life is to become a musician. The second student is a girl named Dinan. She was a disappointment to her father ever since her birth because he always wanted a son. Her entire life, Danan has been trying to gain her father's respect. 
She even cut her hair to a shorter length and played with cars to pretend to be a boy. Yet her father doesn't care about her, while he treats her younger brother like a prince. Then there are brothers named Bruce and Chris. Their mother ran away with a man when they were only kids, which turned their father into an alcoholic. The brothers only had each other to rely on while growing up. Bruce became obsessed with video games to escape reality, while Chris worked hard in a grocery store to make money for the family. Lastly, Henry can find no information about Jack's family background. In the following scene, we see Jack working at a restaurant as a waiter. An MMA better, Jian Ying, arrives at the restaurant with his business partners. When Jian Ying isn't looking, Jack steals his fancy lighter, but is caught. Jian Ying's men beat him up as he checks Jack's ID. After finding out that he is a student, he gives some money and offers him a job as their food delivery man. Somewhere else, Henry visits Zufa's home and finds him running away from his father and his associates after stealing a ticket. He helps him at first, but after finding out why he is being chased, he takes the father's side. Then, he and Zufa come to hang out at a bridge. To motivate Zufa into doing whatever he wants, Henry sings with a band performing in the streets. Seconds later, Zufa joins him and sings in front of people for the first time since being bullied at school years ago. Meanwhile, Bruce and Chris's father comes home late, like always, and orders them to bring him a beer from the store. When the brothers refuse, he yells at them to get out of his house. The next day, Henry meets with their father and convinces him to go to rehab for his son's well-being. In the meantime, Dinan's father brings her a bag of makeup products and asks her to act like a girl for once. Dinan is furious at him for always making her feel like she is not good enough. She applies the makeup on her younger brother and sneaks out of the house with the car key. She is about to drive away in her father's car, but is stopped by Henry at the right moment. He tells her that driving without a license is illegal and suggests an alternative. Following that, they go to a go-kart racetrack. Henry also invites her father and makes them race. The father and daughter show no mercy to each other during the race and eventually end up outside the track. Suddenly, Dinan's go-kart is hit by a vehicle, but she manages to dodge it. Unaware of this, her father cries, mourning his daughter's death. Dinan realizes that he does in fact love her and hugs him. The next day at school, Bruce and Chris, along with a group, are sent to a rehabilitation center to interview a recovering alcoholic. They are surprised to see that the person they have to interview is their father. The students ask him how he started to drink. The man answers that he loved his wife dearly, but she left him at the lowest point of his life. Hence, he started to drink and forgot that he had two kids to take care of. The man doesn't reveal that Bruce and Chris are his sons, but apologizes to them. By the end of it, the brothers are left crying. Somewhere else, Jack has started to work for the MMA better, Jian Ying. He offers Jack a lot of money to drug a fighter's drink in the next game. Jack is reluctant but is forced into accepting the offer. On the day of the fight, Jian Ying sponsors a fighter but bets money on his loss. Jack puts drugs in the fighter's drink but is caught while doing so. Before he can blame Jian Ying, he is beaten up and locked inside a locker. A while later, Henry arrives there and asks the fighters if they have seen his student. The men ask him to return home, but Jack, from inside the locker, yells for help. After finding out he is being trapped, Henry attacks them and overpowers them easily. When the fighters step in, it gets a bit intense, but Henry dodges their attacks efficiently. By the end of it, he knocks out their best fighter, who is supposed to compete in a few minutes. In the following scene, they are at a hospital where Henry gets treated for his wounds. Jack tries to reveal the truth about Jian Ying, but is made to shut up. The news makes it to the television, and Henry starts being known as the man who beat up a professional fighter to save his student. His popularity in school grows, and the students start to respect him. They even get up to welcome him to the class, in contrast to how they were earlier. A flashback shows us that Henry used to be a prankster when he was in school. He even threw water balloons at a student who was playing piano for the parents in an event. Later, he fought the same student and broke his hand. He was suspended for the fight, after which he had to fly to the States. Starting that day, the students pay attention when Henry teaches in class and study hard for the upcoming college entrance test. Everyone is doing great, except Bruce, who has grown addicted to pills. It turns out that while Charlie turned to video games to avoid his family's problem, Bruce started doing drugs. Because he is unfocused, he does very badly in the mock entrance test. Henry promises to help him, but Bruce grows more depressed with time. Eventually, he jumps off the balcony of his house. 
He is rushed to the hospital and goes into a coma. The media twists the news and blames it on the school and Henry for what Bruce did. The officials from the education board interview Henry and decide to revoke his teaching license. When he packs his things and leaves the school, the students chase him, asking him to stay. They are heartbroken by his absence, but they know that they should ace their upcoming test to make him proud. From that day on, they study twice as hard to prove to the board that Henry is a good teacher. On the day of the test, Jack, along with all of his classmates, get a text from Henry asking them to meet in the school an hour before the exam. When the students gather, they find out that it was Jian Yang's trick to keep them confined in the school so they won't make it to the examination hall on time. He is doing this to teach Henry a lesson. A while later, Henry arrives at school and finds out about Jian Ying's plan. He lets the students free and fights all of Jian Ying's people to stop them from harming the children. They escape and quickly make their way to the examination hall while Henry fights Jian Yang. While they are fighting one-on-one, -on -one, Jian Ying reveals that he was the guy who Henry had thrown water balloons at when he was little. It turns out that ever since Henry broke his arm, he wasn't able to compete in a big music competition. Ever since the incident, he hasn't touched a piano and blames Henry for ruining his dream. Henry tries to reason with him but is attacked yet again. They struggle to get a hold of a knife. At last, Henry gets in a chase to kill him but doesn't do it. He asks for forgiveness for what he did when he was little and walks away. The students reach the examination hall at the right time and complete the test. Cut to a few weeks later, they all pass with flying colors. Jian Ying starts to play the piano again, but has a lot to practice before he gets as good as he used to be. Bruce recovers quickly and promises to attend the next year's entrance test. The principal is also delighted because the board decides to give them a 20% bonus fund because their students did very well in the entrance test. Henry returns to teaching and does the fire sprinkler trick on another batch of